The set's been updated. Hello, I'm Eric Ryan from Ball in Europe here, and as you can see, we've got the shiny new additions to the set, a few more jerseys in the backdrop uh, to make it a bit more colourful, a bit better looking, I suppose. And yeah, today, it's what it sounds like. We are going to do my rankings just before the EuroLeague season starts, from 18 all the way to 1, how I'm ranking the teams going into the season. Just before we get to it, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It always helps. And now, let's get to number 18. So, and as a prize to nobody, really, I've got Alba last. Uh, I love Berlin. Uh, apart from the rules around air conditioning, they're a bit too strict. I think it could be a bit cooler there. But, uh, yeah, it's a great city. I love Alba's fans. I love the idea of Alba uh, being a big club. But let's be real. Uh, the financial reality is they can't field a team that is good enough to compete at the EuroLeague level right now. And that's why the roster we're going to see this season, it's, it's in for a tough year. Uh, moving on. So Paris won Euro Cup last year. That's great. The problem is the jump from Euro Cup to Euro League is only getting greater. We saw Gran Canaria opted against it because the extra amount they'd have had to spend plus the extra costs in just going to games, they'd rather stay down the level than make the move up. Paris obviously were created with the idea of being a Euro League club, so they were never going to take that option. They have improved the roster, just not by enough and they're going to be in for a very tough learning experience. Oh, as well. Well, on the upside, I don't have you last this year. That's something, right? And the downside, you're still going to hate me because these bottom three teams I have, they are just not going to be competitive. Moving into teams that actually matter. Not a lot to say here, really, with Maccabi, just that they've lost a whole lot of players that matter. And I think they're going to feel that the hard way this coming season. I just think this isn't a side that's going to be as good as last year's one. They are in what I consider a large rush for those last five postseason spots. But I have them at the bottom of it at the moment. Oof, Basconia. Uh, right, so most people are going to say to you, come on, Basconia always find a way. And I normally would agree. But the losses again this year just feel too, too much. And I just don't see there being enough there for them to get to the postseason. That's why I have them in 14th. And just, not, you know, the wrong side really when it comes to it. FC Bayern. Gordy Herbert has really, really, really high views on what he can do with this team. I think that confidence is very important. I also think reality says there's a limit to how high this team can go. Now, that said, I think we're going to see some interesting usage here this year with some of the guys. So, and obviously Shabazz being there makes things interesting as well. But I think they'll stay in the conversation for the play-ins a lot later than most people are saying, including most Bayern fans, being honest. But I just don't think they'll last till those final couple of rounds and we'll see them fall out of the discussion late. So yeah, a few more changes with Olympia Milano, but I still don't see this as a postseason roster. The whole Ettore Messina being both GM and head coach thing really does detract from him being at his best at one of those roles. Uh, Ettore in either role solely being Messina. Uh, perfect. I actually would be approve it. I know some people say it, that he's too. He's like you know, not going to be what he was as a coach anymore. I disagree with that to be honest. But um, at the same time, when he's got to be both GM and coach, I think it shows in the overall output of uh, Olympia Milano, and that's why I don't have them outside any higher than twelfth. I'm afraid. Now we're getting interesting because it's my first team that I'm kind of going fringes. Uh, so in this case, it's fringes of the postseason. Zvezda, they've made some big moves. Like Cody Miller McIntyre, I already said in my video breaking down their roster, going to be a huge asset. And overall, I think this is a vastly improved team than the one they had last season. And considering where they finished last season, I think they're going to be glad I'm saying that. They'll definitely be in the discussion right now, uh, as in all the way, I think, for the play-ins. 
I don't, I have them on the wrong side, like 11th place is the worst place to get in your league, some might argue, because you're the last team to not make it to the next stage. But like for me, between them and the next team I have, it's really, 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 really tight. Uh, so like, don't, don't give up hope just because some guy in Ireland says he doesn't think you're getting there as Vesda fans. Zalgirish, Trinkieri, lots of changes and finding a way. Uh, I think, again, some of the moves they've made are fascinating to me. Uh, I think we're going to see some guys on a mission, some guys ready to really blossom and bloom. And obviously, there'll be some who aren't going to be quite what they need them to be. But it's Trinkieri. I think he'll find a way. He'll they'll definitely stay relevant late into the season. I'll be shocked if they aren't at the worst relevant late into the season. And I have them right now in that last play-in spot. It's Luca Banki is the big thing here. Like, don't be wrong, the roster, there have been changes. The core that I like is still there. But for me, the biggest thing is Luca Banki is very good at making teams have the confidence to play against teams who are on paper better than them. And that confidence shines through in the delivery, I think. So, yeah, I, I like it. I think, again, they're going to be in that tussle, in that fight. I have them at ninth, which is, of course, in the play-ins. And like Virtus, uh, you know, I think this is a quality roster. They're going to get some really big wins. They will get some very bad losses, uh, but I think there'll be the odd result for them, particularly on the road, which is going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, likewise, there'll be the odd home loss. We're all going to go, what? At? I know this is almost how I describe Basconi of old. I'm not going that way. I think this would be a bit more focused uh, and, and more predictable to some, some degree. But yeah, I, I like this team and I think they should make the play-ins. And if they don't, they should be very disappointed in all honesty. So now we have the last team in the old format that would have made the playoffs. So of course, that means they are in the uh, higher play-in bracket in this case. That's in eighth place. It's partisan, as you see from the clip thingy that went before. This was the slide, we'll call it. And yeah, like, I've done a big video on Partizan's uh, extraordinary roster overhaul. Like, for me, they have, in terms of overall roster, I would rank sixth. And if this was year two, and nobody somehow changed any of their rosters between now and next season, which is obviously implausible, I would say this roster, I would actually rank in the in the last direct playoff spot. I think they're going to need some gelling time, though, which is why I'm factoring in a few more L's than this team having played together would otherwise have, or at least it's a core of it having played together. I'm extremely high on Carlick Jones. I think everybody who's, uh, you know, watched my videos the last while or seen anything I've written knows that I'm very high on what he's going to bring to Partizan. And so I have them in the uh, discussion, obviously. I have them in the play-ins and in a good play-in spot, but not as high as I think they would be if this team was more gelled, which obviously means they could be very dangerous if they progress. FS, yeah, this was an odd one to rank, uh, I'll be honest. Like, of all my preseason rankings, where to put FS and where to put Milano, which are obviously two very far apart, uh, were the two most difficult because of what I'm going to see on the floor and what I expect. Like, the load is going to be greater on Shane Larkin, but I also adore the arrival of uh, Vincent Poirier. So, on balance, I think they are slightly better than last year. And certainly we'll have more togetherness. Uh, I think Niadovic is going to get that out of them. Would I have liked to see a few more signings? Yeah, I think the depth that I would have wanted for this team to be a uh, elite slash automatic playoff spot uh, side isn't quite there. That's why I have to win seventh. If they had like three or four more guys, or even next time, that's, that's a lot. If they had two more guys I trusted to get minutes, like real minutes, and deliver, I probably would, would have them in sixth or fifth. But they don't, and so they're not, and so they're in seventh. Oh, God, we got to talk about FC Barcelona. Oh, why, 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 nobody, nobody but Barca fans care about FC Barcelona, and they don't watch English language content anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so, like, I'm not ready to go full banter years yet on Barca. Uh, I mean, I, I called it last year, and I was wrong, of course. They made the playoffs and went all the way to a game five in the playoffs. Uh, so, you know, I, I probably called it a bit early on banter years now. Maybe I'm going to be late calling it by saying not full banter yet. So I have them in the last automatic playoff spot. 
But in the way of group teams, in my written preview, which is going out on Wednesday, this is out Monday for those of you who might be watching it after it's come out. So if it is Wednesday the second already when you're watching this, there's a much there's a very detailed written preview on the main site. Please check that out. Uh, have them at the as the best of what I call the haves. Uh, Paris, Asvel, Alba, there the have-nots. I have the Barca as the best of the haves, which is getting only one playoff spot automatically between them. And um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not wild about the roster, but I also recognize there's an awful lot of talent there and there's an awful lot of familiarity there. I just feel that it's not in the level of the last five teams we are going to discuss. Okay, Fenerbahce fans, before you jump on me, I think your team is better than last year, and your team went to the Final Four last year. I have been going back and forth in my head on third through fifth, but I decided for the preseason rankings I would stick with the 1-18 to 18 I have in my preview in that order. I wasn't going to jump about and change that because i got to show the respect, and that 1-18 to 18 was decided uh, before a couple of things happened, uh, but I'm sticking to it anyway because, you know, it's preseason. Let's hold to it. So three to five for me are the most movable uh, in terms of who's where of the elites. Uh, you're obviously the last one there, but that's an automatic playoff spot, and the you know the best seed that's not a, fi a home a home quarter, but very a home court advantage, but very much a shot at home court advantage. I like this roster. I think it's final four quality. I think there's five final four quality rosters there right now, and uh, I. Wouldn't be surprised if you get there right now. I have you on the slimmest level of not getting there. But at the same time... Well, no, no, actually, you don't have you on the slimmest level of not getting there. I've got you on the outside in the regular season. I think you will... Well, this is giving away some of my preview. I have you down to make the Final Four despite... Uh, I do, don't I? Yes, I do. I have you down to make the Final Four despite not having home court in the regular season. So there's stuff given away. Shh, didn't tell you that. Okay, on to number four. Shooting is not what I would like it to be, uh, but the talent is undeniable. Now, obviously, Hazania being gone for a couple more games with his, uh, well, basically his weight loss due to illness is going to possibly impact their early season form even more than I think the uh, outgoings already have. Obviously, there was the retirement of Chacho and Rudy. There was the move of Yabaselli to the NBA. But at the same time, when you can lose that level of quality and still put up the roster that Real Madrid have, you have to go, this team is serious. This is a real, real contender of a side. So, yeah, I've got Los Blancos at four. Like, they've got Musa, for goodness sake. Uh, like, this is a really good team. Uh, and Faku, like, you know, it's like, yeah. So, Real are going to be contenders. Like, I have them in fourth. That's just the way it is. Monaco. Uh, well, I mean, it's kind of weird. They're probably the most active club on social media, considering they buy sheer size of Monaco itself have the least support in all of EuroLeague, and that's no diss. I, I follow UCD in football, folks. I know all about supporting the team with the fewest fans, uh, so that isn't a disrespect to Monaco. But uh, yeah, they are very, very good team, like uh, the, the Roca team, as they call themselves. Uh, and uh, Or is it Roca? Uh, you tell me, Monaco, please. Feel free, like, in the comments, tell me. Uh, and yeah, I think that this is improved again. Obviously, Furkan's going to be an interesting arrival. Uh, I haven't spoken about him at all, really, in my preseason videos, which tells you just how busy preseason has been. Like, wow, what a summer it's been. But yeah, I think Furkan's going to be an interesting arrival. Uh, Mike James is still Mike James. And yeah, uh, final four quality roster. Let's get to the first to the two you, you really want me to see. Okay, so I'm definitely going to be annoying people with this, but hold hold your hold your fire, Olympiacos fans, because one, second in the regular season is nothing to sniff at, and two, it means I have you basically down as a team on course to go all the way to the championship game. Uh, second and first were the hardest calls for me, um, apart from where, to put, well, I'll say uh, between two teams in the same uh, consecutive positions, hardest for placing teams was FS and Milan, but that wasn't between two teams that were beside each other. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great roster. Uh, obviously, uh, Vezenkov and Fournier add to what was already a very good team. And uh, like we know, it was a team that made the final four last year. Obviously, it's a very good team. And I think it's designed, as I said in my roster breakdown, which I should hopefully be smart enough to link to there, that this is the probably the best version of Bart ball we're ever going to see. Purest remains logo, but this is a better team than that logo team, which, by the way, 
was a Final Four team. So yeah, I'm uh, giving you second, so that's great. And I have a little word of warning for the team that's next, well, the fans of them. Be a little careful of what you wish for. So the reigning defending champions, I have them ranked number one in my preseason rankings. Uh, you know, Ergen Ataman to top the table with Pana Thanaikos. Uh, I mean, the roster is great. They retained everyone that mattered from the championship winning side last year. And they have added in some serious hitters. Uh, obviously, Shetty Osman's the biggest of those moves. But, like, let's not forget Lorenzo Brown. Let's not forget Omer Yurtsevin. Uh So, yeah, this is a cracking, cracking roster. Uh, the word of warning to Panathinaikos fans is, well, you want to win the championship, right? You don't just want to be top of the end of the regular season. I mean, that's important to you. No team since Euroleague switched to a single league format, like so where everybody plays everybody, everybody twice, who finished, no team who finished first has won the championship. So you can look at this two ways. One, is this Irish guy trying to curse you? Or is he trying to motivate you to be that first side? As we hear the laughter outside, clearly the neighbors are thinking something here. Is this Irish guy trying to motivate you to go that extra step to win that championship? To be honest, neither. I actually just think he'll be best in the regular season. And if you want to find out who I think will win EuroLeague, well, that will be in the written preview that's coming up Wednesday. But also, Panathinaikos fans, given I made your way to the very end for this, I'm not making you wait much longer. The very last of our roster breakdown videos, which is coming up on Wednesday, will be a full Panathinaikos roster breakdown video. So keep an eye out for that on Wednesday, POW fans. Uh, I promise to make it fun for you all. And uh, for all of you who have who've tuned in, thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you'd like to see power rankings during the season, like on YouTube. Drop some comments. Uh, if I do them, it'll probably be monthly, but I won't do them until at least two months have gone in the season. The reason I'm thinking here is, Power rankings based on a month, it's just, well, what am I going to race it on? Whereas if I base it on two months, what I could do then is, or three months, four months, for, you know, all the way to the end of the season, what I could do for doing a mixture of overall record versus record in the last X number of games, say the last month, just for an example. So after two months, half of it is based on the actual, the win-loss record of a team, and then, but half of it is based on just that small window, cram those numbers together, crunch them up, and then give new power rankings based on that. That's a theory I have for it. Uh, you give me ideas of how you would like to see power rankings de designed. Uh, and if you and if you want to see power rankings, like tell me in the comments. And of course, tell your friends, share this out. And I hope you love the new decor. We're hoping to add like two more jerseys into the bottom here. I have one I want to put up. And when I say I have it, I mean I literally own it. It's here. I can't find it. And my room is clean. I literally can't find it. It's very odd. So, of course, the end of this video has been rambling a bit. But thank you for lasting this long. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And, of course, I will see you soon.